Welcome to Evansville, Indiana, a city on the sharpest bend in the Ohio River. As far as barges go, it's the sharpest bend anywhere in the United States of America. Imagine piloting one of those push boats, pushing 15 barges, pushing a quarter of a mile long, carrying 50 million pounds of cargo on the sharpest turn possible, and then another one's coming in the other direction. Evansville is a city torn and pulled in the directions of the larger cities that surround us that cast their shadow on our progress. Indianapolis, Louisville, St. Louis, Nashville. And now we'll say to people, be yourself. Growing up in Evansville or a city like Evansville, you will have heard peers extol their plans and their virtues for leaving for the brighter lights of the larger cities that surround us. As a teen or 20-something in Evansville, you may have heard a conversation that starts something like this. Yeah, I think I'm actually looking for jobs in Indy. And in Indianapolis, you may have heard a conversation that starts something like this. Yeah, I think I'm looking for jobs in Chicago. And in Chicago, it's LA or New York or London. And while there's increasing hopeful data for smaller cities, that folks from larger cities are looking for opportunities in smaller cities, the point is, we humans, are incredibly good at being motivated and inspired by other places and by being dissatisfied in our own place, wherever we are. And yet, the admonition bears repeating for cities. Evansville, be yourself. And yet, we're in an arms race of competition with other cities, competition for Talent attraction. Talent attraction, the beacon of economic development strategies everywhere. A marathon of improvements. Cities cannot rest on the laurels of one project or focus singularly on one mega deal as if it were the silver bullet to cure all civic ills. No, cities, especially smaller cities, must be continuously planning multiple projects, deals on deals deep, years upon years out on a Gantt chart it reads like a never-ending scroll. And in this hunt for talent, if we are to compete, if we are to reach our maximum potential, if we are to outcompete our competition, we must realize, like a civic meditation, design matters for us and them. Because we are good enough, and because Talent is attracted to good design like a moth to a flame. Okay, except good design doesn't kill you when you get there. Now, maybe bad design. But seriously, why then does design matter? And someone's thinking, well, because bad design might kill us. And sure, that's true, true. But because we are humans, it's simple. It's hardwired into who and what we are. So why is it so complicated? Because we are humans. We are so good at lacking a common narrative. We have this thing called politics. We have political divisions. We have experiential divisions. We have ability divisions. We even have this new thing called tribalism. Just kidding, that's totally not me. But one would hope that in a smaller city, these are found less as the connectivity of a smaller city is entirely different than that of a larger city. And that's both good and bad for smaller cities. It's good because it's easier to get involved. It's easier to get a meeting. You might have been a small fish in Chicago, but now you're a big fish in a small pond, somebody might say. And while that's a little bit offensive to the pond, it might be a little bit true. In a smaller city, we'll never have the critical mass to support a boutique restaurant that sells nothing but milkshakes made from pies. 
and only bakes the pies to only put in the milkshakes. No. But we have a beautiful and a simpler connectivity. You really will be able to learn more people in our smaller city social network. And when it's time to leave the city for the countryside, you'll have a quicker trip over a shorter geography. You won't have to travel 90 minutes to leave the light pollution to see the Perseid meteor shower. But some things are hard because of our smaller size. You know, when everybody kind of knows everybody, sometimes that's bad. And, and some, people, some people prefer the greater anonymity of a larger city. That's great. But some things are harder because of our smaller city size, including design. Because good design involves a dialogue around good and then therefore bad design, you will offend somebody that you know or that your mom knows or that your dad knows or that your boss knows. So you better just zip it. One interesting look at different design is in these two buildings right here. One building has gone through numerous changes on the inside and use and tenants over the years, and yet has maintained its exterior look for the most part, while the other building has essentially had one use its entire life and has had to go multiple facade changes just to try to maintain some semblance of architectural relevancy. The building on the left housed the very first Sears department store in the United States of America, right here in Evansville. And while Sears opened another store in Evansville, they kept their downtown store open for a time, they opened their next store in Evansville, and also a building of firsts, the building on the right, Washington Square Mall was the first covered mall in the state of Indiana. Take that, Indy. Well, except within about 20 years, the mall already had to undergo a heralded and complicated grand reopening. And as to the design of Sears as a business, well, history will be the judge of that one, but whether it's the design of a business or the design of a building, surely design matters. Design matters because it's who we are, Design matters because it's where we are, and design matters because it's where we are going. Design matters because it's who we are, and then therefore who we are not. We are not walruses. Now, congratulations, everybody. I want you to turn to your neighbor on your left and pat them on the back and say, we are not walruses. Go ahead and do that now. Good, good. Now turn to your neighbor on the right and say, we are not walruses. Turn to your neighbor on the right, do it, do it. Good, good, good. And now, and now maybe reach out both hands at the same time and just pat both neighbors on the back and pat both neighbors on the back, come on, and say, we are not walruses. Pat, yeah, yeah. Good, good. And now, think about how awkward that was. She asked me to touch somebody I don't know. We are a non-contact species, like birds. You see birds up on power lines, nice little spaces between the birds. Maybe birds that know each other more, sit closer together. I don't really know. I don't speak bird. And although I, I, I don't speak walrus, walruses are a contact species, meaning they lay on top of each other as complete strangers on the beach. <laughs> Awkward indeed. Indeed, we are not walruses. We are hardwired to prefer a certain type of connectivity between others, or, and a distance between others. And we are hardwired to prefer some sort of visual distance that we can see out in front of us, not too far, not too short, to scan for potential predators and risks. And we want to feel some enclosure on the sides, and some places where we can escape for potential risks. And being not walruses, we are capable of shaping and building our environment. And so we can build our environment in a way that connects us to our evolutionary past and literally makes us more likely to want to go for a walk. Or we can build an environment that disconnects us from our past and makes us literally 
less likely to want to go for a walk, and less likely for our improvements to have the maximum impact for our community. Now, design also matters because it's where we are, both locally and, of course, globally. Jared Diamond, in his book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, writes that even the orientation of the continents had a profound impact on the history of human development. And locally, we're in Evansville. We're down on the river. At one point, Evansville's low elevation was a strategic advantage. It made our spot on the river advantageous. Remember that tight river bend? Well, in the days of motorless barges, it was easy to dock on that tight river bend. And when you got docked, it was easier to get your wares up to market to sell on the street. In Evansville, with our low elevation, we might have had one or two less stories in height up the hill to get your goods to the market. And then this happened. Trains. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. It totally changed the barge industry. And then we had this. The flood of 1937. This is over seven blocks from the river at what is Main Street and now the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. You may not recognize what you're seeing because of all the progress we've had, but what once was a low elevation that was advantageous suddenly was a disastrous disadvantage. So now we have this, we have a levee, and here in Evansville we have one of the most computer-controlled, state-of-the-art levee systems in the entire United States of America. And it protects us from floods. But it also disconnects us from the river in ways that are costly to overcome. And design matters because it's where we are going. It's where we are going because in an age of social media, it is easier than ever to share visual information in mass. It's where we are going because millennials and boomers alike increasingly prefer walkability. They prefer good street design. Remember what that means. It means we can actually design a bad street. Remember, talking about bad street design can be touchy in a smaller city where you are going to offend seven different good people in somebody's sphere of influence. It's tough. Because we need critics to improve. We need criticism. We don't need blind enthusiasts, and we don't need mean-spirited, heavy-handed, nattering nabobs of negativity either. Sometimes a smaller city may be desperate to catch that next wave of the urban renaissance, and in that desperation it might cloud a community's response to otherwise honest and fair and loving criticism. And to paint a loving critic as a chattering, nattering nabob of negativity who loves her city is a grave disservice to the community. It's like this. If my kid is in t-ball and has a terrible swing and I don't do anything to help them have a better swing, then therefore I am not that great of a t-ball dad. And if in order to improve my kid's t-ball swing, all I do is yell and say, you know you got a terrible t-ball swing, well then I'm a terrible dad. And if when the coach comes out to correct the t-ball swing, I jump in defensiveness and I say, well, what you really need to understand about the swing is it's based on, or I yell at the coach, get your hands off my kid, he's got the best swing on the team. Everybody here in the stands knows that, look at his swing. It's the best swing, best swing, best swing. <laughs> the people in the stands rightly think, he's crazy. Don't be crazy. Don't be a blind enthusiast. But don't be a jerk either. So what? So what is this all about? This is simply about the need for a broader and deeper conversation around community design in small cities across America. And that has to include architecture and criticism. So don't be a blind enthusiast. Don't be a jerk either. Evansville, be your best. Thank you.